Welcome to the Chesford Grange Hotel here in a very autumnal Warwickshire. As the show season tails off, we take a look at three best in shows from Richmond, South Wales and Belfast. Before we begin, on today's programme we've got a bit of a treat for you. Two experts to cast their eye over the action. Um, one usual face, Andrew Brace, Dog World Consultant Editor, and one less usual face, Di Johnson. Now Di, this is the first time we've seen you on Around the Dog World like this, but we do actually see you on every programme, don't we? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm at the ringside, aren't I? Yes. I'm an avid <laughs> dog follower. I love dogs, it's my hobby. It has been all my life. Esme Samuel once said about me, um, if there's a dog in a field, die or stay and watch it. And she was about right. I never get bored with looking at good dogs. And I never get bored with watching judging. Well, luckily enough, we've got footage from Richmond Championship Dog Show. Lovely. Let's go and watch that now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Richmond welcome to Ronnie Owen. We're now proceeding with the first of our group winners. This is the miniature wire-haired Dachshund. The toy group winner, Rufon Dussawa, number 1411. And the Norwich Terrier, number 3366. Followed by the winner of the working group, the Newfoundland, 4346. And now the pastoral winner, Number 2789 for Samoyed, followed by our winners from today. The Labrador Retriever, number 5817. And now the Utility Group winner, Dalmatian, number 6778. The first dog for Ronnie Irving to go over is Zena Thorne Andrews' miniature wirehead Datsund. Champion Drake Sleep win a lot. <laughs> this is the Hound Group winner, the miniature wirehead Datsund, 495. He's the breed record holder with 41 cc's and 25 group placings, including five wins. He was top pound in 2010. Next up for the judge is Barbara Murray's Griffon Brousseauxois, champion Beauview Brave as a Blizzard. Toy group winner, Griffon Brousseauxois, 1411. He also holds the breed record for black and tan and smooth varieties at 17 cc's. Earlier this year, he took the group at SKC and Group 2 at Windsor. Ronnie is now going over the Norwich Terrier, champion Ragus, very gentleman. This is your Terrier group winner. The Norwich Terrier, 3366. This is the third Terrier group win for the Norwich, along with 10 cc's. He's been in the placings for most of the year, with a star performance at Crafts under Paolo Dondino to take the group at just 14 months old. Next is a slightly larger specimen, the Newfoundland, Caliba Artemis Pride. The working group winner, the Newfoundland, number 4346. Tim Farr and David Turner's Newfie now has four CCs and this was his first group win under Finnish judge Alina Harpenyemi. The pastoral group winner was the Samoyed champion Vandream Imperial Hermione by Berezniki. Group winner, the Samoyed, Lisa Bobrowski's Hermione is now a veteran at seven years old and has collected a superb 34 cc's and 10 groups. Way back in 2008, she was reserve best in show at Crafts under Claire Coxall. Next up is the Gundog Group winner, show champion, American and Canadian champion. Salty Dog of Tampa Bay. Our winner for today is the Gun Dog Group, the Labrador Retriever 5817. Linda Hess's Labrador Salty is another veteran in the Best in Show lineup. His record in the UK stands at 19 cc's. We also saw him on Around the Dog World taking reserve Best in Show 
at Wilkes earlier this year. And last but not least is Jenny Alexander's Dalmatian champion Offerdale Chevalier. And the last of the group winners, the utility group winner, the Dalmatian 6778. Tom Mader put through the Dalmatian to best in show. He has 14 CCs and two other group wins at Welsh Kennel Club and Bournemouth and is another dog who has been in the placings all year. I wasn't at Richmond, but you were, I understand, for the duration. I was. So you're probably in a better position to... Well, it's a lovely show because it's old-fashioned. What it's do you mean by old-fashioned? It's all of a piece. The rings are in the middle and the trade stands around the outside and you feel like you're at a proper dog show. I love Richmond. And, of course, the secretary, Ron James, efficient and a very close friend. Why wouldn't I be at Richmond? <laughs> So what about the big ring, best in show judging? Um, yes, I thought it was a very good best in show lineup, and I thought Ronnie Irvin obviously made a very good job. I love Leslie Crawley's Norwich Terrier, champion regus married gentleman. I saw him first at uh, Boston, a baby, and Martin Phillips... Java. <laughs> yeah, obviously another expert on the breed, gave him the group, which I thought was brave and absolutely right. I followed the dog all through his career, there is um, a family liking. I loved Leslie's mother, of course, Marjorie, Marjorie Bunting, Bunting. Mm, yeah. who taught me a great deal. She was something of a harridan, a tyrant, some might say. Uh, yes, she was a very controversial lady. She was, was, but she was prepared to teach us youngsters. She tried to encourage me to judge her breeds. I never quite had the confidence, because, of course, I come from a generation where the terrier world was... was Proper some, dog people. Exactly. And I was just a Dane person. Um, I, I regret that now when I look back yeah. on it. Um, but, of course, Leslie just bred into dogs. I'm thrilled that she's having the success she's having. I think it's well-deserved. Um, and I'm pleased for Martin that he had the pleasure of giving that particular dog its first ever group. Called Merry Gentleman. Because called Merry Gentleman. Born on Christmas born Day. Born on Christmas Day. I think his, his call name is Paris, if I... Yeah, where did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Leslie has a hankering to visit. Um, but no, I think he's a great little terrier, and he won under a terrier man. He won the group under a terrier person. René Spohr-Villis. Exactly. From Sweden. I knew you'd know Walcott him. Walcott has so. had lots of Norwich Terriers. Reserve best in show at yes. Richmond, the Samoyed. The Samoyed. Mm, very, Hermione. And a very sparkling Samoyed. You know, She's a beautiful meant, bitch. Yes, this, this silver-tipped loveliness that Samoyed's well, she have. Must, that, she must be an age now, because mm. I remember giving her the Pet Plan Junior stakes yes. quite a few years ago. Yes. But she's very typical, isn't she? She, she very, has the Samoyed smile. and Nice moving bitch. Yes, very, mm. very. Well, there's something else in that lineup that I like particularly. Oh, probably Barbara Murray's Griffon. You're right. That little black and tan. He thinks he's a Rottweiler. I mean, he's out at the end of the lead, he moves, he's got all the style in the world. And again, bred by Howard Ogden. Okay. He's I a great it. little show dog. He's a great real, dog. Real little stallion. And again, uh, Barbara had been in dogs years and years and years. Wonderful boxer person. Yes. I have to say, I do like to see old dog people win. I like to see new ones as well. I like to encourage the new ones, but it's nice when you know them and you know they've, they've tried hard to have dogs this sure. good. Recognition. And of course, the Labrador that I have this soft spot for. A very mature dog. He's a dog in from America. Is he called oh, Salt? Salty Dog of Tampa Bay. I first saw him 
when Meriel Hathaway, a very close friend of yours, gave yeah. him a champion stakes at Darlington. He caught my eye. I thought what a handsome, masculine dog he was. And I'm pleased to see his continued winning. Mm. Like I judged him in the States, you know, before he came over. Really? And did you spot his potential? I gave him best of breed, but Valerie Foss had got there first and given him best of breed at Westminster. I'm very impressed by some of the youngsters and their dedication and their depth of interest and the way they want to learn. We know we're beleaguered by a group of people who want to do everything fast tracking, but there are still people who really want to know about dogs. Mm. And that's where hopefully people like you and I can be of some help, yes. as people like Catherine Sutton, when broadly were to us. Talking about young people with enthusiasm making a mark. Now, um, someone who's been around the dog world for quite a while um, is the gentleman who handled the best in show winner at Darlington, beating the Norwich. Yes. And that's a good mate of yours, that's Dave Killerly. Yes, do, he is. Do you think he served an apprenticeship? I surely do. Um, I think he's a great dog man, he's a terrific handler. He cares, he's interested in dogs. Um, he won with, with the Bouvier. I don't know anyone that would have the strength of character to match the strength of character of that particular no. Bouvier. He's just all dog, and, and Dave Killerley is wonderful with him. The Norwich was second to him. The judge was Liz Cartledge, who I rate extremely highly. Mm -hmm. um, again, a terrific lineup. I thought particularly there was a pointer. I think it's called Ice Maiden. Will Cremain Ice Maiden winning her first group under Frank Kane. She went around the ring, the profile... She's gorgeous, she's gorgeous. She got the reserve ticket under me as a puppy at Three Counties the previous year. Really? Yeah. I think I saw her at Birmingham a couple of years ago win Puppy under Derek Smith. Yeah. I thought she, she was absolutely lovely and that day her command of the ring, but we're talking Dave and this tremendous Bouvier. Um, a, Whose name is oh, I Champion I'm Special in essence, Movado at Canics, I think. Well, I'm more familiar with him. He's Mo to me. I Mo, think. is that what they call him? Yeah. Right. Um, but let's, can we talk a bit about Dave Killerley? Sure. Because he's more than just this Bouvier, <laughs> as if that's not enough. But his kennel, he and his wife, and they have a partner, Arlene Clare, the consistent type they have produced. You know, you've found Red Peters. Witch Peters many times. Many times. It's, it's the amazing consistency of type. They can bring in a dog from another country and immediately they are back into their own bloodline and breed type. Do you remember Mary Hambleton could always do that with Marbleton Boxers years yeah. ago? It's a knack certain breeders have got. The Americans have a wonderful expression, um, which is when they're speaking of a breeder like that, they say they seem to have a cookie cutter. Yeah. And I think that would probably apply to the Red Richard Keaton. Yes, I certainly think it would. Yes, it was a good show, Darlington. Well run by David mm -hmm. Guy, I thought. Very efficient. And it's a show that there's always something going on. You know, they... they Don't they have endless stakes yes, classes there do. for everyone? Yes, I know they do. But for people like me who want to see dogs, it's a wonderful opportunity. They have reserved CC stakes. Something is always happening at Darlington. One of the problems with our champ shows now, I think, is you've watched your breeds and then the show sort of dies There's for an hour. hour. Yes. Mm. And that's when people go home. Now, if there's still something to watch, as there is at Darlington, I think people stay and watch Best in Show. Sure. It makes for a great atmosphere. No, I, I, I have a, a lot of time. It's a show I always hope I can go to. But then I'd say that about most shows, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, Darlington came the week after Richmond. Mm. And there were five, five group winners the same. Mm. But by this time of the year, don't we find the best dogs are emerging mm, and, and are doing the, the, the top winning then? 
I mean, the, the lady with the good Dalmatians. Had Jenny done. Alexander. Yes, she'd figured all year through the, the groups. With Offerdale Chevalier. Yep. Um, he was there. The Griffon we've mentioned, the Norwich we've mentioned. Um, the, the good dogs are now finding uh, it. Cream rises to the top, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. By the time you get to Darlington, we really know which are the best dogs of that year, don't we? Mm, pretty much. So after Darlington, we had Driffield mm -hmm. and then Belfast, mm -hmm. pretty much back to back, mm -hmm. uh, where we had the same dog winning best in yeah. show. So let's go across the Irish Sea to find out who that dog was. Before we see Belfast Best in Show, Marina Scott managed to sneak a few words with the show secretary, Jackie Stubbs. Hi, Jackie Stubbs, secretary of Belfast Dog Show Society. Thank you very much for joining us. Not a problem. Now, just explain, you were here four years ago as secretary of this society, and now you're back. Yes, I was. I was secretary for approximately 12 years. Uh, due to health reasons, I retired and the members asked me to come back and re-elect me into the post of secretary again for another term, which is nice for the members to do that. And it's been a physically kind of demanding sort of last uh, few months because for the committee, you've had this hall to get ready. I mean, not yourselves, but obviously the King's Hall complex. Yes. This uh, is a brand new facility um, just for the dog show. <laughs> this is brand new. We're the first people through the doors. It got finished at 10.30 on Friday evening with the fire certificates being handed over. It's been bedlam. But I think we've got a good show with a wonderful atmosphere, which is what we are always after here in Belfast. And it's been hard work, but good committee, good workers, membership pulled together well. We've had a super team working, and I think it's paid off for us. And being the only general championship show over the water, across the water from the mainland, um, obviously you do cater for us, uh, us English people, I suppose, you know, um, with the ferries, etc. Um, how difficult logistically is it to try and get and attract entries from the mainland? It's very difficult. What we do is now we must thank Stena, our sponsors. They give us a very good rate four exhibitors coming over, they give us a rate for the trade stands, which we need. Without the trade stands, we'd have problems. Uh, Stan has been brilliant, worked hard. Irish Furries also is trying to help us next year. So hopefully we're getting this up and rolling and make it a lot easier and a lot cheaper for some people to come over. With the fuel problems, we know it's hard to travel because we have to go that way all the time. It makes a change for us to bring yous over here, you know, but we'll get there. That's nice. And now the groups are just getting started here on the second day as well. We've just been treated, or the, the audience is packed actually around this ring. We've just been treated to an absolutely fantastic display by the local police uh, dog team. Tell us about that. That is our local uh, PSNI, they'll have to be called now. Um, they've done the bite test, nine bite tests for us to show the public. We think it was something different to keep people interested and make it more of a day out for families. We're trying to bring the family in and encourage more people to come, so it's just not all dog show people, if you understand what I mean. We we'll try to get kids in, get people. I think it was wonderful. It was good. I, I certainly enjoyed it. I think everyone around the ring did. Good. Thanks for joining us, and good luck for your best in show. Thank you very much, my darling. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Mather. Right then, first into the ring, please. The winner of the working group, the Bouvier, exhibit 2334. Followed in by the pastoral group winner, the Old English Sheepdog, exhibit 2023. Now we have the utility group winner, the Toy Poodle, exhibit 1565. Followed in now by the Hound group winner, the Petit Basset Griffin Van Dian, exhibit 284. Now we have the Irish Water Spaniel from the Gundog Group, Exhibit 739. From the Toy Group winner, the Maltese, Exhibit 1380. And finally, but not least, the Terrier Group winner, the Irish Terrier, Exhibit 859. First to be examined is the Working Group winner, the Bouvier, sent forward by Mr. Tegwin Jones. 
That is your working group winner, the Bouvier de Flanders, exhibit 2334. The Bouvier, champion I'm special in a sense, Movado at Canix, is owned by Fiona Lambert, Janet Hughes and Pat Murray. No CCs were on offer today, but he has nine plus 11 group wins and was best in show at Darlington. Next we have the Old English Sheepdog, the winner of the Pastoral Group, Exhibit 2023. This was sent forward again by Mr. Tegwin Jones. That's your Pastoral Group winner, the Old English Sheepdog, Exhibit 2023. Caroline and Ben Ford's Old English Sheepdog, champion, Irish champion, Oak Farm, Gypsy Rose at Clenmayen, has four CCs and was best of breed at Crufts in 2011. On the table now we have the utility group winner, the Toy Poodle, exhibit 1565, sent forward by Mrs. Jean Lanning. That's your utility group winner, the Toy Poodle, exhibit 1565. Lee Cox and Tom Isherwood's champion Vanatonia, you'll see. Last year's best in show winner is through for a chance at the crown again. Graham has racked up seven all-breed best in show in a glittering career. On the table now we have the Hound Group winner, the Petit Basset Griffin Von Dean. This is exhibit 284. That's our Hound Group winner, the Petit Basset Griffin Von Dean, exhibit 284. Champion sole trader Peekaboo won her 24th group at Belfast under Nick Bryce Smith. Jilly has six all breeds of best in shows to her name and is currently top dog for 2012. And now we have the Irish Water Spaniel from the Gundog Group, exhibit 739. Your Gundog Group winner, the Irish Water Spaniel, exhibit 739. Merlin, the Irish Water Spaniel, won his 18th CC and 17th group at Belfast. Show champion, American champion, Whistle Stops, Elements of Magic, has four all breeds best in show and two reserve best in shows to his credit and is currently top gun dog for 2012. On the table now we have the Toy Group winner, the Maltese. This is Exhibit 1380, sent forward by Mrs. Fairleth Summerfield. That's our Toy Group winner, the Maltese, Exhibit 1380. Champion Benetone Gold Boots won through from the Toy Group and has collected 20 cc's overall, although none were available at Belfast. Sarah and Rosemary Jackson's Boots was best in show at UK Toy and has amassed 12 Group 2 placings. On the table now we have the Terrier Group winner, the Irish Terrier, Exhibit 859. That's your Terrier Group winner, the Irish Terrier, Exhibit 859. And our final competitor for Best in Show is the Irish Terrier, champion Fleet Street Fire and Ice, owned by John Averis and Tony and Jean Barker. John handled her to her fifth group win, but handling her here in Best in Show is Andrew Goodsell. Come back after the break to see who Tom Mather award Best in Show at Belfast 2012. If uh, the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight, yes. What would you ask him? To care. To care about us a bit more. To remember that the Kennel Club is supposed to be for the furtherance of pedigree dogs, and we are pedigree dogs. Um, I want them to care about us. I want them to share our interests. I want them to stop 
caring about the RSPCA and care about us. I can remember once Edna gave me a bitch that I was very thrilled with, and Olive said, where did you get that from? And I said, Mrs. Harold gave it to me. She said, she did, she couldn't have sold the damn thing, could she? <laughs> <laughs> and then Olive gave me a bitch that I thought was lovely, and Edna said, well, make sure you showed him long grass with feet like that. <laughs> They stopped my life, effectively, for mistakes. I see myself as the judge that was banned. I think we have made a decision. Best in show is the Toy Poodle. And runner up is the Petit Bassett Griffin Von Dion. Well done to the remainders. Best in show, Toy Poodle, and reserve best in show, the Petit Bassett Griffin Von Dion. Congratulations. So, best in show at Belfast 2012 was the Toy Poodle. Champion Vanatonia, you'll see, otherwise known as Graham. Lee, this is the third time you've had best in show in three years. I mean, what are you playing at? <laughs> They'll ban us from the ferry, won't they? <laughs> no, it's marvellous. Yeah, we were best in show three years ago with the, uh, with the crested Nora, and then Graham's been best in show for the second year today. So, over the moon and gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. And he's obviously had such a fantastic year, and he's just keeping it on going. I mean, how do you keep him in tip-top condition all year round? He's been in a, had an amazing year, amazing year, a bit similar to Gav's bitch, really. Um, he's allowed to be a dog. He might have all this hair, but it's important that they're allowed to be a dog. He has free running. He's got. Um, he's allowed to just enjoy himself. You can always put him in a bath and sort him out later. But as long as they're allowed, yeah, that's, you know, to keep him fit, feed him good food. Just treat him normally. Many congratulations. I'm sure the committee won't want to see you again next year. <laughs> I know, it's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's right. Well, moving on to Gavin. I don't want to see him next year, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, Gavin and the PBGV Jilly, um, a very close runner up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a good lineup. A really good lineup of dogs. So, And Lee's a friend, he's a great dog. So, you know, we've been at it all year, backwards and forwards. So, as you know, it's one person's opinion. We've both got two good dogs, so we can't complain, you know, so really and, uh, good. I understand that is quite a significant win today. Yeah, mathematically, yeah, Jilly is now top dog all breeds this year, so it's like, it's a dream. My ambition, one of my ambitions in dogs, for the homebred dog, I couldn't be more ecstatic, so it's, it means a lot, you know. It's and, 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 and it's very well deserved, I have to say. Yeah, she's a fabulous bitch, and I, I'd be the first person to say, you know, congratulations for that one. It's very, very well deserved. Yeah, it means a lot, and you know, it's very sporting that the, throughout the year we've had top winning dogs and we've all got on well. There's been no grudges with anything, you know, sort of just go for it. So it's been it's been pleasurable, once in a lifetime experience for me. I've enjoyed it. Can't wait to end the year to have a rest, but it's been great. So uh, really, really special. So and I am going to throw them overboard and go home. <laughs> that was my line, actually. <laughs> Many congratulations to you both on another great Belfast. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Marina.
So, Graham, the toy poodle, mm -hmm. wins Driffield and Belfast. Mm -hmm. Now, last year, if you remember, uh -huh. he had this amazing hat trick of mm. getting those two shows and then South Wales. Yeah. So, best in show in England, Ireland yeah. and Wales. But um, for those people who are wondering whether or not Graham might actually repeat that hat trick this year, that's not going to happen because unfortunately when we get to South Wales, Lee Cox, is mm. Graham's co-owner, mm. is going to be judging one mm. of his other breeds. Yeah. So, history's not quite going to repeat itself no. this year. But what a great little dog. Great little show dog. Oh. And he's really blossomed. I mean, he was a sort of gawky youngster. Took a time to, yeah. took time to get yeah. his act together. I can remember Ken Sinclair having him in the ring at Leeds and he dropped his tail, but he still was going to be. And didn't you give him a very early ticket? First he got or his second, second ticket under me yeah. and I said to Tom, take at least six inches of hair off that top knot. He's got a beautiful head, so why hide it? And He's, they did. Yes, yeah. Well, Lee has always been prepared to listen. Mm. This is why he's made such it's a good... another of our good young yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. The greatest admiration for Lee. Um, and Tom, Tom's a student. Oh, absolutely. Um, that they're a, a great pair, a great asset to dogs. That little toy poodle, he's a great little dog. He's a tremendous mover. I just love him. The two dogs that look as if they're in the lead are just great dogs. Jilly and Graham are outstanding. They've both got that indefinable charisma, that love of the show ring, handlers that can get the best out of them. Um, they're good dogs, Andrew, you, you know, you've great put dogs. both of them up. Great dogs. Um, and the thing is, there are always good dogs. The trick is, the judges finding the good dogs, and this year, they have, haven't they? They seem to have come through, absolutely, yeah. And of course, Jilly went reserve best in show in Belfast, mm -hmm. behind Graham. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, she secured her position as dog of the year. Did she? No, no, nobody could then catch her because of the shows that the various yeah. dogs were going to. Yeah. She was, she was up absolutely unassailable yeah. after Belfast. Yeah. So I imagine Gavin and Sarah were breathing a sigh of relief on that boat back home. Yeah, I suppose they were. It's, it's a good win though, isn't it? It's a justifiable yeah. win. She, she's, been, she's been terrific since a puppy, since we saw her at Crafts. And I think what's been so good this year, um, and has been very evident, is the, the three dogs that we've had in the frame, which include Merlin, of course, the Irish, Irish Water Spaniel, mm -hmm. who was also a group winner in Belfast. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting when you see these dogs in the Best in Show lineup together, the very obvious camaraderie that exists between their owners and handlers. Yes. It's not as cutthroat as, no, as we've seen in some, it isn't. in some years. Yeah, I've been very impressed by the way they've all been willing to congratulate each other. Because you've got Gavin and Sarah, Lee and mm. Tom, and Judith Carruthers yeah. with the Irish Water. Yeah. They're all, you know, long established yeah. dog people. And they are capable of admiring virtues yeah. in other people's dogs, yeah. Which, yeah. which is admirable. And as it should be. And as it should be. That's the wonderful part about dogs, really, yeah. that we can all appreciate. Well, we should all yeah. appreciate. And, I, and I think most, most genuine dog, dog people, people actually yeah. do. Yeah, yes. Those that last, we'll always have people in and out of our hobby, our sport, sure. whatever you want to call it. Um, but those of us that have been in it for life, we do have the ability to appreciate a good dog, no matter who owns it, no matter what breed it is. Mm. I can remember watching Merlin, the Irish Water, win a group at Darlington last year. Mm -hmm. And then he quite took my breath away. I thought on that day what a special dog he was. So how, how, how I had no idea he was third, but how nice that he's third. Mm. Great dogs. It's a pleasure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A pleasure for you judges. Great dogs are exciting. Mm. Now, Andrew, unfortunately, I couldn't get to South Wales this year. A great regret, because two of my favourite Welshmen starred there. Peter Green, who is just superlative, a great judge. And you were doing the commentary, which is fitting. So Indeed you can I tell was. us you can tell us more about South Wales. Okay. Well, let's have a look at what happened at South Wales.
So the first group winner for Peter Green's judge is the working group winner, the St Bernard champion Chandlemore Sparks Will Fly over Sam Haven. Sarah Robertson and Wendy Doherty's champion soul trader Peekaboo is now the winner of a staggering 26 cc's, 25 groups and 6 all breed best in show. This is Annette Siddle's pointer, show champion Wilpermain Ice Maiden. She has five CCs and one other group at Darlington under Frank Kane. Sharon O'Dwyer's Samoyed, champion Blue Aegean Aphrodite by Kalinski. South Wales saw her take her fourth CC and improve on previous Group 2 and Group 3 placings. This is Faye and Carol Bevis's Akita champion Dyke Bar Revenges Suite at Steakal. She took her third group along with her 11th CC at South Wales. Now for something a little bit smaller, the Norwich Terrier champion Ragus Merry Gentleman, winner of Best in Show at Richmond, and this was his fifth group win. And finally, we have our toy group winner, the Pekingese champion, Yaki Ua Cantona. This was Eric's 11th group, and he's the winner of two best in show, including at City of Birmingham on our last programme.
First of all, could I just say, ladies and gentlemen, please don't believe everything that you've heard about me <laughs> because the truth is definitely much worse. <laughs> And this lady moved in with a rough collie. And I thought that that dog was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Well, he let this bitch out. And Pat just went, <gasps> and I said, you shut up. I said, we haven't got <laughs> I said, we haven't got her in the car yet. <laughs> She's doing the standards. Anyway, uh, Lily goes in and she said, um, Miss Turner, Miss Turner, lacquer is prohibited here in the States. So Lily said, it is a tome and all. I've not put one up with lacquer in it air. Well, she had a little 10 inch toy and its top knot was about here, like this. <laughs> and when it moved, it was pulling it to the side. It was like leaning over. And she let these two bitches out in the paddock and Steve was standing there and it was another do like at Atkinson's with Pat. Steve said to me, oh, look at that, he said. What I'd give to own a bitch like that. I said, you be quiet. He said, that's not the champion. <laughs> and Alan said, what do you think? I said, oh yes, I'll have her. And as soon as I said I'd have her, Alan shook hands with me and he turned to Steve. He said, there's no offense here. He said, I'm not selling this bitch to you. I'm selling it to Derek. As, uh, This is ridiculous. No, no, no. As no. a lifelong friend and a pensioner. <laughs> so, so I said, oh, right. And he charged me 200 pounds. Good Lord. For that bitch. We made her a champion and she produced us three champions. So there we have it. Jilly takes another best in show, securing her position as Dog of the Year All Breeds 2012. I don't know whether Gavin and Sarah actually appreciated the fact, but that must have been a very, very special win mm. for Jilly because Peter loves that Norwich. Mm. In fact, I think he gave him, well, no, I know he gave the dog best of breed at Crufts. Mm. So to get past mm. Leslie's Norwich mm. and to Peter was an amazing achievement. Mm. But to win under Peter Green must mean, to any real dog person, must mean a great deal. Yeah, he's a dog man's dog oh, man. Oh, yeah. He's, he, he left our shores and made his name in the, the United States of America. So, Gavin and Sarah, it was a bit of an exciting weekend at South Wales, wasn't it? Uh, I think that's a little bit of an understatement, to be honest. Um, it was a magical weekend for ourselves at South Wales. Um, when in best in show under Peter Green, who is one of the most well-respected judges in the world. I've got a lot of admiration for him over the years, so that was really special and a wonderful lineup of good dogs there. So that was a great weekend. And then after Best in Show, the weekend got even better with phone calls from abroad from, well, where can we start? I almost feel embarrassed to say America, Germany, and- um, England. And England <laughs> as well, yeah. So yeah, we were in Wales. So um, yeah, we had Best in Show with a, a team that we bred in America. Um, best in show, two best in shows in Germany with a dog that we co-owned and bred. Um, 
who's actually Jilly's grandfather. And then Sarah went to um, our club show for the Bassett Foves and went best in show there. So it was quite a remarkable weekend. What, what was the reaction like when you, when you both met again for the first time after the day? I think to start with, we didn't know about the other wins in the States and Germany. So it was kind of like, I think my news came first because it was much earlier in the day and obviously then Gavin was towards the back end of the day and then the other news started then to come through about Germany and obviously then a little bit later through the day that the news came through about um, America as well. So it was just mind-blowing really. Sky high I'd imagine. Absolutely. Oh yeah definitely and, and you know as a breeder it means a lot that other people come in with your dogs in other countries so it's not just about the dog that we have at the time so it, it was it was really nice really sp and it'll never happen again so we've had some great moments over this year and previous years with other dogs but to do that in a weekend was quite quite something I think so uh, it won't be achieved by us again that's for sure so uh, <laughs> and that was really good. And of course, Jilly just the a couple of weekends before at Belfast confirmed that she was she was top dog for 2012. That's a great couple of weeks. It's just it is just unbelievable. It's just something you expect to happen to other people, not ourselves. Um, and it is you know everybody wants to when they start showing dogs do great things with their dogs, but then to be top dog is just yeah, it's, it's just a, phenomenal. It's, just it's kind of a, a dream. I know that may sound a bit of a cliche, but. Most people in dogs, they want to try and achieve something high up, and that is over a calendar year to do it you know, consistently. That means a lot. There's a lot of judges that have appreciated her, and a lot of work's obviously gone into keeping her in condition, obviously, but it, it does mean a lot to do that. So it's sort of, it is one of our ambitions for sure to have done that. So to, to have achieved it is brilliant. And with a homebred dog as well, kind of makes it even more special. So brilliant. Now since South Wales, we have seen the 90th birthday of one of the greatest characters in dogdom. Marion Spaven has had a long life in dogs and is the woman widely acknowledged for making beagles the breed they are today. In 2010, Marion took centre stage for an audience with Marion Spaven, hosted by our very own Andrew Brace, where she left the audience in stitches with her legendary joke telling. Here's a quick look back at that evening. <laughs> okay, kids, I just have to have a little, because memory's not very good. Mm -hmm. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, they were more pack type, um, uh, with a bit of a snipey face and not much of a head. There was, there was nothing really much, and the temperaments were very friendly, but they were wild. And Champion Darling Gamble. And if there's anyone in the audience who has never heard of Champion Darling Gamble, you may leave now. Because, <laughs> uh, he, well, he changed the breed, didn't he? Absolutely. To to that totally. Dog. Yes, he did. He changed the breed for temperaments and everything. Yeah, well, I, was, I was quite an odd child, actually. You can imagine that, though, can't you? You being an odd child? Yeah. When you, when you say odd, I mean, in what way were you different, odd? Different. Different to most children. So give yeah. us some examples of your difference in naughtiness. Well... Don't think I have to tell them. Go on. <laughs> so, do you want her to tell you? No, they're not. It's not rude, though. But uh, I was. I also had a good imagination, and I had this imaginary pony. And uh, <laughs> like those days. This is news to me. The, I know it is news to you. These days, like those. I'm sorry. Those days, uh, they used to have the corner shops, didn't they? You know, corner uh, grocery shops. And uh, your mothers used to send you for um, uh, half a pound of butter, and not like today, but they used to just send you for the odd things. And I used to go like, and um, and I used to go on my little pony, which I tied in the front garden. And I used to untie it, get on it, and ride it to the shop. And then it's <laughs> true this, and then. The they had some razor railings and I used to tie it up there and go in and then come out and untie it and get me a loaf of bread and ride home. <laughs> and this day, I forgot my pony. <laughs> <laughs> and as true as I sit here, I Why went all the way it? back. <laughs> Honestly, and I said, I'm ever so sorry. I forget what they called it now, untied it and rolled it back and patted it. <laughs> that's, in, you know, I was, that's how I was, you know, sort of a funny. And then after the pony, my mother got a bit fed up with me riding this pony, she bought me a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real bike. 
I know. <laughs> At Marion's 90th celebrations, we managed to sneak a few words with the lady of the hour. So I managed to steal the woman of the hour, Marion. How are you enjoying yourself tonight? Absolutely fantastic. I just can't believe it. I didn't even realise I was liked so much. <laughs> there's, there's around 200 people here come tonight. Do you, do you realise that? Yeah, I do, I do now. It's absolutely fantastic. And I, all my friends and the people I love are all here. I've really touched very, very much with it. And, oh, fantastic, darling, <laughs> fantastic. Well, many congratulations and a big happy birthday from all of us at Dog World TV. And thank you very much. And, and thanks to the Dog World people. They've been very, very good too. Thanks, darling. Bless you. Now, Andrew and I, Marion's been a big part of both of your lives, hasn't she? Uh, yes, really for longer than I care to remember. Uh, as most people realise, I've had a little bit of success with beagles. And um, the reason that I first had a beagle was I was at a show, a little open show in South Wales, of which we had many, and there was the most gorgeous six-month-old beagle bitch walked into the ring. She was called Imdi Amy. And the minute I saw this puppy, I thought, I have to own one of this breed. And uh, eventually I located um, a beagle puppy but was sired by Dialin Gamble. And Gamble, of course, was the dog that changed beagles forever. So um, Marion and, and I have been sort of associated for a long time. She was at my 21st birthday party. She was at my 50th birthday party. She was recently at my 60th. Uh, and therefore, obviously, I was at her 90th. And so was I, of course. Marion is universal. I don't know anyone that doesn't love Marion Spaven. I'd go so far as to say I think she's probably the most loved person we've ever had in dogs. Very, she, pro very probably. She's got a terrific sense of humour. She's, <laughs> she's a very knowledgeable dog person. It's the, the love in the room for Marion on her 90th is just, just overwhelming. Well, that's all from us this time on Around the Dog World. Thank you, Andrew and Di, for joining us. And please come back next time to see us at the Yukonabur Champion Stakes Final. <laughs>